Uh, here at the Library of Congress, our primary responsibility uh, with our film collection is to preserve this nation's cinematic heritage. We've been acquiring film since 1894. The survival rates for film produced in America during the nitrate era are pretty appalling. And we estimate that of the films released in the United States till 1951, only about half survive. And the survivability of films released before 1920 is even worse. We, we think there are only 20% of those films left. And that's the reason why the Thanhauser films that we have in our collection are so precious to us. We take our responsibility very seriously. Uh, and we do everything we can to make sure that these wonderful films are preserved for future generations. The collection we have is around 130,000 reels of nitrate, uh, probably one of the biggest in the world. I don't know if we're the biggest one in the United States. I think we might be. Uh, we, we, hold, we do have the distinction of holding the largest collection of original nitrate negatives, at least in the United States. Um, including collections from studios such as Columbia, uh, Warner Brothers, Universal, and RKO, and Disney. Uh, the bulk of the collection after that would be the holdings that were uh, brought to us through the AFI back in the 70s and 80s, which would be collections of, of collectors and also of filmmakers um, and people like Mary Pickford, people like uh, Edgar Bergen, Irvin Willett, whose uh, families would give us their nitrate material. In our collections here at the Library of Congress, we hold between 50 and 60 original nitrate prints that were made by the Thanhauser Company. Uh, they cover the entire era of the company's existence from 1910, probably about 1917, um, including the uh, justifiably well-beloved evidence of the film uh, which came to us in 1999 uh, through some interesting machinations. The majority of the films, in fact, I say probably all the films that we have gotten over the years from, that came from Thanhauser come from private collectors, because that's where so many of them ended up uh, after the years, uh, at the end of the road for film distribution, they would end up in the hands of itinerant uh, showmen who would take them around the back roads and show them in little towns like Culpeper. Um, and then they would just put them in their barn or garage or basement and there they would sit until they were rediscovered by someone else. The nitrate film vaults here are of a, of a new design because of the flammability of nitrate. The, the film has to be specially stored to protect the films from each other and to protect us from the films. Uh, so as you will see, the vaults are heavily climate controlled and fire controlled and are built of a very, very Thick concrete. Yeah. I've got a key though. Hmm? We are underground actually. Really? Yeah. The hill, down. the hill comes across the top of it. <laughs> okay. So this is the foyer of the nitrate vaults. On this side we have a uh, our little offices. Since since dragging the nitrate up and down stairs would be a bad thing, they gave us a secondary office where we keep our uh, books. Actually, I, I refer to this as Little Dayton, because it's basically the same setup we had back in our offices in Dayton. In fact, most of the stuff in here is from our offices in Dayton. Great, this is a hand crank projector? Mm -hmm. That is a, a Montgomery Ward toy 35 millimeter projector. Wow. And it's kind of interesting, it's a typical corporate America of being able to, to sell a device to play nitrate film to children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is our workroom. This is where we actually do all of the uh, rewinding and inspecting and identification Should of be. our work. Um, it is uh, currently not heated, which is why you know it's a little, little brisk in here. I can feel that. Yeah, what, what is this gauge? Nice. This is a shrinkage gauge. This will tell us uh, just how, how badly shrunken the film has gotten Whoops, over the years. So how do you, how does it actually work? You put the film oh. on these two pins and mm -hmm. it tells you over a certain... Yeah, you, you'll hook it over this one and then you pull it up to a certain, which is 15 frames plus two sprockets. And you pull it up and then the needle will raise up. Mm -hmm. And most, I mean, if a film is in pretty good shape, you'll get like, you know, about, maybe about here. Yeah. But we get That's a few that... I know the beginning is... Oh boy, this looks familiar. Cool. 
<laughs> Actually, this is the warm part. <laughs> These are the nitrate vaults. Actually, this is the, the A pod of the nitrate vaults. Beyond those doors down there is a second hallway that is even longer than this one. This, this side contains 50 nitrate vaults, and there's another 74 on the other side. Um, the vaults are kept at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, let's see, it will start over here, actually. The one new thing that we have are these uh, acclimatization vaults where we can actually raise and lower the temperature in case stuff comes in on a really hot day. We don't want to shock it. And if we have to send things out into the heat, we don't want them to go out cold because then they, would, they might uh, get uh, condensation on them. So we can actually use this little oven switch to raise or lower the temperature. Um, at its cold side, it is 50 degrees, and it can be warmed up to 70. And this one actually has a lot of stuff in it right now, because about two weeks ago, we took a trip to Pennsylvania and picked up uh, about two-thirds of the film you see in this vault that we are currently working on identifying and putting into our uh, database system. So you don't have the reels individually shelved? Or is that Not in here. These, these are just sort of our, our sorting vaults. Okay, but right. the, the vault vaults, they right. are They are cubbyhole. You'll see those. Okay. So we are almost at capacity now. Oh, really? You're almost full. When, you know, the idea was when they built the place, we were supposed to have 20 years worth of expansion space. But then we suddenly had to take in a collection of about 20,000 cans, just an incredibly huge collection. <laughs> and so now we have, we have about three vaults that have nothing in them. And two of those are going to be eaten up at the end of uh, November with the Disney collection coming back. And, and it looks like right now we have been offered, I think we've been offered enough nitrate to fill another 25 volts. Wow. So <laughs> there is a lot of film out there. I guess we can't order, I guess we can't offer uh, URs. Uh, oh, you can. You can do it quickly. Oh, nice. Right. This is the standard nitrate vault. Once the nitrate has been uh, entered into the system and labeled, uh, it is shelved in this kind of a configuration. And the idea being that we can protect the films from each other and we can protect us from the films. Because it is shown in tests that, let's say, one of these cans and one of these cubby holes were to catch fire, um, it would possibly catch the other can on fire. But because the surrounding metal is all packed with fire retardant materials, and as soon as the smoke hits a smoke alarm, it'll open these pipes up and bring down a 200 pound per square inch water curtain that would cover both cabinets, um, the idea is that nothing else would catch fire. Mm -hmm. And it has worked in tests. So hopefully we never have to find out if it actually does work. But. Just in case, there is also a chimney in the back. And there's a, a panel. Blow out huh? blow out there's a blowout panel way up at the top there. You can just see it. And that will, uh, with not too much pressure, blow out and force smoke and flames and whatever else up and away from the building. So yeah, so the uh, like the the Van Hauser films are spread throughout the vaults. I mean, they're not in any one particular yeah, space. They come in at different times. Right, and they're all in different collections. So like yeah. evidence of the film actually is, was in Vault 21, and they might be down farther into the long end. I mean. If, yeah, this, this side, all the vaults on this side are all the collections of Columbia Pictures. That's our largest collection. On this side, we have Universal and a lot of the AFI material. That yeah. The city yeah, we yeah. should still have them. This, this right here is actually called the knuckle because it actually bends. If you see it from the air, it actually comes down, and at this point, it bends. Actually, you can see right there where the walls start changing. And but this, this is, is 75 feet. This is the long hallway. Oh my goodness, look at that. You're right. And this hallway is great for singing. We have one of our uh, guards comes down here and he sings opera. Oh and it's my just. God. That's, uh, that's kind of interesting because you think it wouldn't be, uh, you think it just echo too much. It does. Every, every little noise you make will, will echo like crazy. And then that door at the far end actually leads to a little alcove that then goes up and out the back. So if you're back here when the fire alarm goes off, you have to go out there and then find your way back to the front. 
And well, you gotta walk the entire length of the building back. Um, and down here we have Warner Brothers. Most of these vaults are Warner Brothers and RKO. And then there's some Paramount. We have a couple of vaults of Paramount Silence. That's about all the Paramount material we have from the silent era. <clears throat> and on this side, pretty much all these vaults running down here are all the vaults of the John Allen collection. Going all the way down to about 109. You're kidding me. He had that much money? Huge there? collection. It was 10,000 cans, right? 20,000. 20,000. <laughs> yeah. 98 skids full of film. Nitrate. All nitrate. We haven't found any of the things. We just had come to light, and we're hoping we find the rest of it, a Mary Miles Minter feature so called... A uh, it's more water damage. It's more just wherever it was, it was very, very wet. This is... We know that he had that. This actually doesn't look too bad right off hand, but once you get into it, I can see it, right it is, there. yeah, there, it is all, it's, it's got a lot of water damage. Yeah. And it smells, is this water it smells damage? wet. Yeah. Hmm. You can see, you can smell, smell the night, you can smell mm -hmm. the deterioration starting too. Yeah. So, but this, you know, this is probably the only copy of the Fairy and the Wave, which is Mary Mile, Mary Mile Minter mm -hmm. uh, feature. Mm -hmm. 1915, I think it is. But we also have, uh, I have here, a special shelf I had set up called the Nasty Shelf, which is, that's exactly what it is. Oh, there you go. This is part of the Julian Bryan material. Uh, the one that I, I remember in our collections, I opened up the can and you can see the gas bubbles breaking. Mm, that's bad. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Back up. We went down to, uh, the This area um, is actually used for when copyright prints come in. This is where they're, in fact, here they are. These are the ones we just got this week. I think we've already gotten, here's our print of Michael Jackson, This Is It. Oh, you got that? Oh, look yep. at that. that. This is it, huh? And the Sherman Brothers story. And I think one of these, somewhere in here, are, we just got our print of Zombie Land. Yeah, we don't actively collect stuff, but stuff comes along with the films. Yeah. So a lot of these are, are little bits of uh, ephemera that have just kind of shown up here. Don't forget that uh, before I leave, I'm going to give you scope, nine, scope. seven, eight, nine, and ten, eleven, twelve. Oh yes, thank you. Yes, that word. Just look in the. That's you know, a new scope. No, that's not. Okay, that is it. Actually... Yeah. Oh no, no, it's just it's just stereo cards, and just How press you, you press that little button on the top, and it goes to the next okay. one. Yep. Now this is actually one of my favorite things because I don't know how many of these are. This is actually a cameraman's bag from the Eclair Studios in Fort Lee. It's just got little bits and pieces of machinery. It looks like it. Ball bearings on there. Yeah. And this is my little home away from home. Well, just as an example, this this is uh, the print, probably the only existing print of the Thanhauser film. Uh, the evidence of the film from 1913, so this print is from 1913. Uh, this print was acquired by the library in 1999 and um, is in absolutely amazing condition for a film that is quickly approaching 100 years old. Um, it has no active deterioration. It's fairly complete. It is shrunken, which uh, accounts for some of the jittering that you see on the screen that just could not be overcome at the time that it was preserved. Uh, the one thing that did not make it into the first preservation, as you can see, the intertitles of the film are, are, are dyed, or tinted, excuse me, tinted a bright orange color. You can kind of see them sticking up here. You also kind of see the, uh, the Thanhauser uh, edge coating that, that is very common on all of their early films. The one thing you cannot tell is that this smells like chocolate, <laughs> which just blew my mind. I never thought of it. But yes, it smells like bittersweet chocolate, which seems very appropriate. Great. I can also pull this out so you can actually show them how well this film has is holding up. Yeah. And there you can really see the the Thanhauser. Yeah, right along the edges. Might be able to. Okay, great. Right. Thank you, George. You're welcome. <coughs> All right. You now I need to run this back up to the vaults.
great.